So if these are the ingredients of our vision, what tools do we need to produce the desired result? Well, first of all, the desired result has to have definition. I mentioned in one of my messages to a dear friend in response to the Nobel Award to President Barack Obama that we need to keep our eyes on the prize. And then I erased it because I don't think we've sufficiently defined what the prize is. So there must be a small, cohesive, international group of rock-solid people feverishly working to redefine for all who want to be active and a part of our vision just what the prize is. And this prize, our vision, must be repeated and explained often so people can differentiate our vision from their reality. Here's where language becomes important. If we want policy instead of speeches, then this must be repeated early and often because what I'm alarmed by is that in the absence of us providing real definition, and there are reasons for that, people are beginning to think that a speech is policy. But as I said earlier, there was a lot of news yesterday. Some of it even more important than the Nobel Peace Prize Award. But the award certainly overshadowed all other stories. And I'm always searching for context. Because as the US military puts it, perception management is important. And we must understand the context of what happens and when it happens in order to understand why. I always say that we must see the invisible, hear the unspoken, and read the unwritten. That's what some of the organizers of Ver la Verite were professionally trained to do before they became whistleblowers. Now they are our leaders. Now, what were some of those other interesting news items? Well, at a Native American lodge, located next to Senator Jane McCain, John McCain's ranch, two people died and several others were hospitalized following a hazardous material situation at the sweat lodge, which is like a spiritual retreat led by Native Americans. I've been invited to participate in one upon my return to the U.S. Now, I find this interesting and a story that should be followed up on. And I will be doing that because I want to make sure there's no bigger story hidden in an important cultural ritual of the Native Americans who are victims of a genocide in North America that continues to this day. On the day that the Nobel Prize was announced, we also learned that the U.S. bunker buster bomb will be ready in a few months. This is the bomb that holds over 5,000 pounds of explosives and is designed to penetrate hardened facilities, including those underground. Some brilliant people in the US even want to put nuclear tips on bunker buster bombs. However, in announcing the near deployment of the project, that pays McDonnell Douglas to adapt the B-2 bomber so it can deliver the Boeing-made bomb to its intended target, the Pentagon press secretary said this, the reality is that the world we live in is one where there are people who seek to build weapons of mass destruction and they seek to do so in a clandestine fashion. The article also noted that the Obama administration had not ruled out military action against Iran. Another story noted that hours after winning the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize, President Obama met with his military advisors about troop levels in Afghanistan. 
The troop increase requested by the U.S. commander ranged, it is reported, from 10,000 to 60,000, although the top number isn't the one that was listed in that news report. I had to go to another news report to see the true top number. At any rate, it seems that the choices confronting U.S. and European leaders is whether to increase the current 68,000 U.S. boots on the ground in Afghanistan or to merely increase the number of drone attacks, decreasing death and destruction, and bringing our young men and women home is not on the Nobel Peace Prize winner's agenda for discussion. The last article of note is about a restaurant in West Georgia that is using the N-word on its marquee to describe President Obama. Now, for those of you who speak French in here, I'm not talking about noir. It reminds me of the Atlanta area restaurant that put on its marquee that I was buckwheat with boobs. Now, those of you who are from the U.S. will know what that means and the depth of the insult that was intended. The article notes that I, too, made this restaurant's marquee. Both restaurant owners claim to not be racist and to be protected by free speech. My point in including this particular news item is that we still have so far to go just in terms of our human relations. It's imperative that we do what we can to spread our message and our vision and reach those who can be reached. Which brings me to who can be reached. Those with enough discernment to know that what is being pronounced from on high is not their reality. And rather than accept or discount the contradictions, we want them to join us and struggle for a better reality for everybody. I am saddened beyond belief that on the day of the Peace Prize Award, a struggling democracy in Honduras was besieged with U.S. supplied weapons and U.S. trained paramilitaries and snipers in support of coup leaders over the democratically elected people's leaders. In fact, the latest dispatch from Honduras is that many of the snipers and paramilitaries now descending on Honduras from all over Latin America were trained in my home state of Georgia. More and more people are experiencing cognitive dissonance, and rightly so. Our leaders and respected organizations are lying to us. One friend and former congressional staffer of mine puts it this way, we need a democratic military instead of a militarized democracy. Whoa. The United States, with the help of its European and Asian allies, maintains over 700 bases around the world. That number is increasing under President Obama. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that we must combat racism, poverty, and militarism. Our movement cannot struggle against militarism and fail to address racism. We must be comprehensive. And to racism, militarism, and poverty, we must now add gaining control of a media that will allow us to communicate to a broader community and not just within our small spheres. And also regaining control of education so that people are not so dumbed down that they actually believe that war is peace, slavery is freedom, ignorance is strength, and lies are truth. And if we are right, then others will join us. They will share with us their dreams and their passions, and we will help to empower them. Global resistance, combined with local action, organization, vision, commitment, and resources, will allow us to have significant victories in the future. Vers la vérité,